I'm sorry this will be about a what, 30 minute video, but this is an interesting one. People know, people need to know about this product. Welcome everybody. Bit of an unusual one today. I'll try and keep it brief. I'm on a job at the moment where the chimney breast has previously over the years, because this house dates back to 1895. Um, previously, there's been a bit of staining from the chimney coming through the plaster work and leaving stains on the wall, which penetrates through any finished wallpaper. So what the previous customers had done is had that chimney breast wall all the way around there. You see that panning around? Chimney breast wall lined with pitch stroke foil damp proof paper. Now that is the original damp proof paper that if you went five, six, ooh, 10 years ago, it's, it's a paper, it's like a grease proof paper. It looks like a grease proof paper with a pitch, i.e. like bitumastic layer in between the paper and then a foil layer on top. And that's what they call it, foil pitch paper. Now that's applied using a special waterproof adhesive. Now the process of using that was quite, quite complicated, but now everybody knew how to, how to use it. You used to get your paste table, you used to cut off your length that you required, whatever length you needed. And on the, the paper side, you used to get some warm water and soak the backing in. So it made it um, expand slightly. Didn't, didn't expand too much, but you used to soak that surface in. And then with the special uh, is it two in one adhesive or waterproof adhesive you used to paste the back of the paper. It was a nightmare because it used to curl up on you. That's why you put the, well, you used to soak it in slightly. It helped stop the curling up and then you applied it to the wall. Now, when you applied it to the wall, you made sure that you overlapped, well, I'll, I'll say quarter of an inch, you used to overlap the joints by a quarter of an inch. So if there were, there were any um, signs of damp coming through that wall, and uh, don't forget, if there is major damp, you've got to source where that damp's coming from. In these old sorts of properties, you probably can't find that sort of damp, and it's just historic. So to stop that moisture, damp coming through the wall, coming through the paper, coming through onto your finished paper, used to overlap quarter. Not a lot, you didn't need to do much. And this is what was done last time round. So that's a swine to get off. So we've stripped all the walls, you can see that. That side there had polystyrene, I'll just get it. Had that polystyrene insulation on. Um, we stripped that off dead easy and then it was lined over the top and then it had been painted. That's come off. And my plan is, and what we've recommended, is to re-foil both sides of the chimney breast, bringing it round the chimney breast and onto the front of the chimney breast. But technology and products have moved on. We don't use this anymore. The last time we used this was last year, that sort of soaking in the back end, and it had changed. It had changed, it was rubbish. Now, you've heard of Wall Rock. Wall Rock do another product and it's called Damp Stop and it is very similar. And I'm gonna show you what it is because this is what I'm gonna use. It's still got that silver, can you see that? Still got that silver surface and on the back, it's almost fabric. So a lot better. It's not gonna curl up on you. You don't need to soak it in, but you do need to use, I'm just gonna reach over here. I'm back. You do, you do need to use the Wall Rock Damp Stop Thermic Adhesive. Now this is a special waterproof adhesive to make this stick to the surface. But you're gonna to say to me, Phil, what's special about this? Well, this will stop your damp or stains coming through your wall. It's also got thermi thermicable, well, heat reflective because it's got that, well, what should we call it? A Baco foil coat into it. So in effect, you could use this in areas when you wanna bounce back the heat. 
obviously you won't put a wallpaper over the top of that. So if it was at the back of boilers and things like that on a surface, you could bounce back the heat. Not doing that today. We're using this to line these walls to stop any staining coming through and to kill two birds with one stain. This will give the customer a little bit more warmth to the room because of the, the fabric backing it's got. Now this, you haven't got to do any soaking in. It is literally paste the wall and apply it. You apply it black side to the wall. Follow me? You use this, paste the wall and apply this. Now, there's different ways of hanging this. You can butt joint it. If you're using it for thermic value, you can butt joint this. If, like what I'm doing, to stop any damp coming through or any staining, you overlap this by 20 mil. Follow me, two centimeters. So slightly overlap it on your wall and that will stop anything penetrating through it. Now, if you want to be really, really, really bib and braces, you can hang this horizontal one way, butt joint it, and then go back over the top with another layer of it, horizontal, vertical, so we don't get any joints corresponding and you don't need to do any overlapping with that, i.e. 20 mil overlaps. That will give you a double layer that will stop anything coming through. Now this isn't as severe as that. You don't need to be double lining with the, with the damp stop on these walls. What I'm going to be doing is literally hanging this, don't matter which way you do it to be honest, hanging it and then overlapping 20 mil. Now don't forget, if you're overlapping that, you'll get a slight raised area because you've got a double part of the paper. Now, that's not a problem. We can just get some fine surface filler and try and skim those out if they're looking too bad. But what I'm gonna be doing is, I'll just go behind. I will be lining over this, that'll be on the wall. I will be going over with the fiber liner, you know, the, the wall rock fiber liner. Now, what a lot of people do and do it wrong, they put this on and use the correct adhesive and then they line over the top or wallpaper over the top with the wrong adhesive. Now, if you're going over this, you still need to use the damp stop thermic adhesive. Do you get me? So, the best and ideal paper to use is still this as you're lining over the top of it because this has paced the wall. With the foil, I'm gonna call it foil, the foil damp stop on the wall, you give it about 48 hours to go over the top. Give it time to dry because naturally it can't dry through that silver surface, can it? So you've gotta give it 20, 48 hours before you go over the top with wall rock, and this is paste the wall onto that, job to gooden. Once that's dry, next day, you'll be either painting it or hanging a wallpaper like I will. So, is there any questions on that? Kind of keep it as simple as that. I'll insert some more video at the end of this when I've done it so you can see it, but literally, this is paste the wall, make sure the back backing is hung to the wall, Overlap it, 20 mil, let it dry, 48 hours, and then if you're going over with another wallpaper, i.e. the fibre liner, make sure that you paste the silver, which is on the wall, still using the correct adhesive, the waterproof adhesive. Once that's dry, then you can do whatever you want over the surface. So on that note, I think I've covered it all. Thanks for listening to me. Any questions, just ask. But this is your new pitch foil lining paper. And this will 
sort out anywhere that you've got issues with moisture and damp coming through the surface because not everything can be sorted out with putting a coat of paint over it. Sometimes you need to do this sort of work to get the job done properly. On that note, I'll leave it with you. Right, we've just blended out and we've blended back in. Now, I've prepped all these wall areas all the way around. I did go over with a coat of guards, that's all nicely dry. Any little bits of filling that are needed, I used Presto F um, filler, went over that. That was dry because I did what we've just blended out, that was yesterday. I've kept the same top on so I know what, what videos I'm editing at the right time. <laughs> that's by the by. Right, so where we are today, I've just got these walls a nib down, fine nib down. Anywhere that there was a bit of filler, first thing this morning, I just spot primed using the Zinzer Guards because I know that was going to dry quickly, which it has. Now, if you read the instructions for um, this damp stop, so if you've got areas that you say is quite porous, you can thin this down. It says a one to one ratio, so you can do that. I've not needed that because one, this wall's not too bad. Two, it's only a bit of filler that I've needed to spot prime with guards and where I'm going to go. Now, the other area that we're doing is obviously above the fireplace and that's the main um, area of concern. Not so much for damp, but more, more so for previous historic um, soot stains, you know, that come through a chimney breast area. Now, as I said, that has previously been foil pitched papered and that's still on. You're not going to get that. You're going to struggle getting any of that any more off than that. That's the main reason being because the adhesive that was used is waterproof adhesive. So me trying to strip that, it's not going to come off very easy. And also that surface with it being pitch and foil, it doesn't soak in any water anyway. So we're quite happy that being tight. I don't want to say tight as nuns knickers because the nuns that watch this video also get very upset when I mention things like that. But you know what I'm saying. That's tight and that's also been guarded. And as I've said, down into that corner there is all guarded. So we're good to go. We're all sound. Now, let's just talk about what we're doing on this foil. We're pasting the wall. I've told you that, pasting the wall. And the, the black side of the paper goes to what you've what you've pasted now i'm not using this because we've got bad damp now if you read the instructions on the back of the paper this can be applied by butt jointing it make sure you've got enough adhesive around the joints to make that barrier seal just in case anything does want to penetrate through there's nothing going to be penetrating through here but because we are doing these wall areas and i want to show you and explain things hang from the bottom because if there is going to be an issue of any damp coming up on the house rising damp comes up no more than a meter so if you get your first length on and i'm going to be hanging it horizontally hang it across the bottom and then you can work off from that and i will be butt jointing now if there was an issue of damp there you can as i said previously you can overlap this by 20 mil two centimeters so as that goes on, your next piece would be overlapped. Make sure there's enough paste on that surface there, the special adhesive paste, because it's waterproof, that'll stick to that. If you have got a real issue with damp and you're trying to hold off stuff coming through, I would advise, like it says in the instructions, double line with this. So hang it one way and then the other on top of itself Make sure you keep using this adhesive because nothing, nothing will stick to that because it's a shiny surface. This will stick to it. Don't try and get away with ordinary tub paste. It won't work. I know. Trust me on that one. I know. So today I'm going to hang this piece. I'm going to go all the way up. I'll shape on the first one on and then we'll come and have a look at it when I've finished. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't, please don't overcomplicate it. When you come to the main chimney breast, just try and go round the corners in one because you don't want to have anything um, 
protruding, you know, coming through the corners. You, you know what I'm saying to you. But I'm going to get that first one on. I'm not going to be overlapping and wrapping around the corners. I'm going to cut straight, neat to the angles. And then what we'll do when we come back to do the, the fibre liner wall rock, that gets hung, paste the wall again. Make sure you use that because that sticks to that. Tub paste doesn't stick to this and all you'll do is just peel it off in sheets. So um, let's crack on. Also want to tell you, this adhesive is straight out the tub. You, you don't need to mix it. Don't thin it, keep it as it is. It goes on nicely. I am going onto the adjacent wall there. I'm not worried about that because it'll dry off. If you get any on your woodwork, make sure you get the edge nicely coated up. If you do get any on the woodwork, I have got a bucket of warm water to sponge it off before it dries. That goes on lovely. Just make sure you go far enough with your adhesive. I've just got a medium pile roller. because it's the first time you're using it again. Put plenty on. Don't over roll it out, just make sure you've got a nice even coating. Now, I'm going to hang off the roll, I'm going to slightly overlap into that corner, I'll just trim it back and do the same there. Have you seen these? That's good for pressing down paper in the corners.
the blunt end of your blade, this is an awful blade, will mark that foil. So if you just drag it down into the corner, then you can just pull it away and then just cut to your mark. That's probably as easy as trying to use a blade. I'm just gonna run another brush full down that angle just to make sure. Yeah. Happy with that. Just using the squeegee just to expel any last bits of air and also get any creases out. Now remember, this on its own is thermic, has, has thermical bulb values. So you will actually notice an increase in heat and temperature in your room because it's bouncing back stuff that's in there. Check it to make sure you've got no air bubbles. Jobs are good. Un. So um, do you want to see me do the next one and then you know what to do? Yeah, go on then. Don't worry if you get some paste on the face of your foil. Because we are going to be lining over it and using this paste anyway. Run a brush full across that edge. We should all be well pasted on there anyway. But I just want to make sure we've got a good seal because we are butt jointing. Now, if you're inclined, you could use a brush to apply the paste or stick with a roller. Just make sure you put enough on. so much easier to use than the old traditional foil pitch paper. Now you can cut this with a blade because it's obviously a fabric, so don't worry about that. I'm just showing you with shears because not everybody will feel comfortable with a blade. Now I've just cut that to size. I'm just gonna check that I'm butt jointed across. I can just see it creeping out there. I'll just move it down a little bit. Yeah, I've got it now. Right. Then work your magic on, working from the middle up and out and get all your air out of the paper. I'm well happy with that. 
coming across that joint there. Job's a good one, I'll show you what I've done. So because I made sure that there was enough paste on that joint, that'll make a seal that if there is any damp, it won't come through the paste. You can see I've just got a bit of paste on these angles there, I'll just tidy that, I'll just run a brush down it, just smear it out. Matter about that. We've got any air bubbles out and we tight on that joint. So my next piece up there will go butt joint again and then when we come to these play it by ear work out what's going to work best for you doing this I'm butt jointing it so I'm not too critical on where I'm going to be hanging these lengths of paper because we will be going over with the wall rock fiber liner afterwards and then it will be painted on the skirting board that dado um, picture rail sorry picture rail that'll be touched up because we're not doing the ceilings customers already done that and I'll be doing the woodwork and then putting the finished paper on later but for now, it's gone on a dream. So um, leave, leave this with me and then I'll just show you what it all looks like at the end. I'm sorry this will be about a what, 30 minute video, but this is an interesting one. People, know, people need to know about this product because it is a, I don't want to say a lifesaver because it's not a lifesaver, but when you've got problematic walls where you've got staining coming through that you can't treat with a, a paint, or you've got the soot deposits coming through on the chimney breast or the main thing, damp, that you can't um, find where the problems are, this is what you need to put on. This will hold back. It'll be a, a retainer to a, a damp problem, an effervescence problem, but obviously try and treat the source before you start doing anything like this. So, see you later. I said I'd be back when I've done. Probably that there, there, across the chimney breast and behind me, oh, no more than a couple of hours. Dust. No more than a couple of hours. What I've done, butt jointed, you saw how I did it, going horizontal there. I've done exactly the same on the opposite side. And then when I've come to the actual chimney breast, I've obviously worked out, I say obviously, it's not obvious if you didn't know, I've worked out what was easier for me and I've literally hung from a corner edge, did a full length, did another full length, and then literally the end drop only to the sill height, you know, sill height, the um, chimney fireplace height. Um, I've just trimmed it down and I literally got the blade and cut neat to the edge. Then with any little off cuts that I'd got from these recesses, I filled in the parts down round the bottom, made sure I'd got butt joints on everything, and then the pieces down these sides, down these sides, you see, they were dropped in one. Now what I've done, because it says on the instructions, make sure that you've got enough paste on the butt joints that when they butt up, they make a good seal. I've gone round any of these edges, the butt joints, the external angles, I've gone around with a brush full of the adhesive just for extra security. Don't forget when I come to actually do the lining over the top, these get pasted, paste the wall, these get pasted with the same adhesive. So I'm just doubling up on any of these joints just in case, just to make sure that one they're down and if there was, there isn't, if there was any damp it's not going to penetrate through the joints. Now, as I said earlier, if you've skipped through and you've not heard that, there's three options of doing this sorts of paper, like I've done, and this is what's in the instructions. Butt jointing, making sure you've got enough adhesive on the edges. You can also overlap it 20 mil. If you've got a mild, weak, uh, damp surface, nothing too drastic. If you have got a serious damp issue that you can't hold back with anything else that you've done, double double line it with this stuff, go over it twice, and then you go horizontal, then vertical, or vertical and horizontal, depending on what you're gonna be doing over the top. So all in all, 
I think I've given you a good description, explanation on how you're going to stop marks on walls coming through like the soot or even if you've got damp because this is damp stop and this is by Wall Rock and it's MAV. Do we call it MAV? I think they're in Gainsborough. I think they're in Gainsborough. Um, so you're asking me where do you get it from? Um, all good decorating supplies should have it. If they haven't, these were from Tool Station because the all good decorating supplies didn't have enough. And you can also get the adhesive through Tool Station as well. Um, top of my head, it might be, I don't know, is it £10 a roll? I can't think. But check it out online. But no, places like Paintwell Brewers, um, even probably Dulux Decorator Centre might even have it. But I'm quite pleased with that. So that's it. Thanks for listening to me. When this video finishes, there'll be an end screen for some clickable links to other videos. Please watch those. I hope you've enjoyed it. Give us some comments. Have you used this? Have you used the other traditional, what was on before, traditional pitch foil paper? How did you do it? Did you know that you have to wet it in? Because that's where a lot of people make the mistake. They think they just paste the back and put it on. But with the traditional, which we're not using anymore because there's this, but the traditional stuff, you had to wet the backing in to allow it to soak into that bit of a brown paper stroke. What do we call it? It looks like greaseproof paper. But no, I've waffled on enough. Thanks for listening to me. We've kept it under half an hour, surely. <laughs>